score one and one. So both teams coming in with winning winning uh, 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 statistics and also undefeated in the league. For La Mirada, the big thing tonight will be see how much work Hugo Corral gets. Hugo Corral, the outstanding tailback, over 2,000 all-purpose yards last season. Hasn't played it down this season, and they bring him back here in game number seven, just in time for the heart of the Suburban League. So we'll see what happens with Hugo. He was an outstanding tailback last year for La Mirada High School. It's too bad the kid suffered an injury early on and has unable, enabled him to play rather up to this point, but hopefully he'll get some time in the night and see how he looks. Keep it on, number two, Forrest Carlisle for the Monsoons. Carlisle averaging about 150 yards a game in 1995. Brian Butcher, the quarterback, is also outstanding. This season, he has over 970 yards passing with eight touchdowns. So he's really, really done a great job this season. And this team's really improved under Mike Fitch only in his second year. Carlisle is deep for Mayfair. As the Matadors get set to kickoff. Trying to see who the other deep man is for Mayfair. That's number, I think, 32, Rich, or 34. 34. It's Dungeon Let, the Shen Let. Some kind of uh, distant relative to Leon Let of the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. I'm not kidding. Let's hope he scores touchdowns and doesn't drop him before he gets Leon, the end zone. Yeah, yeah, one handed star there. <laughs> okay, the officials finally say, let's play football. And this game is underway. Carlisle into the end zone will be touchback, and it'll come out first and 10 for the Monsoons. Mike, I'm not sure Mayfair's ever beaten La Mirada. I'm, I'm, I'm serious when I say that. I'm not kidding around. I mean that. I, I don't know if they've ever beat him in the history of their, of their uh, existence. They're primed tonight. They're, they are at a, have a great opportunity. They're 1-0, 5-1 overall. I'm sure they're inspired. I'm sure they're high. I'm sure they, they're very confident, thinking they can beat La Mirada. This will be their, their year. So let's see what happens. Live it over, if you would. Thank you. Let's see what kind of tempo is set here by, by Mayfair High School. So first and 10 for Mayfair. Carlisle in the backfield. Of course, Butcher... Brian Butcher is the quarterback. First and 10 for the Monsoons at the 20-yard line. Long count by Butcher. First play from scrimmage is a give to Carlisle. Carlisle trying to go off of off tackle. Gets a couple of yards, bring up second down. Carlisle was brought down by number 31, Junior Maso Mosi. Also number 44, Mano Alvarado was in on that tackle, which looks like uh, Mayfair is going to come out and test the uh, defensive front of Lamrata, see exactly what kind of lineups they have, what kind of stunts they're going to be running, what kind of stacking they're going to be doing, because Mayfair basically is a passing offense. Well, Forrest Carlisle is the guy, again, on the ground, almost 150 yards on the season average is his average, so we'll see him getting quite a few carries tonight. Butcher again sets so his line, short count this time, drops back, looks, throws. Pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for Eric Atherton. Atherton was being defended there by number 84, Greg Rudiger. Incomplete pass, bring of a check down. Bring a third down for the Monsoons. Actually, Rich, that was a quick two-step drop. Nice, easy, safe pass pattern. High statistical re completion rate on that pass, but um, Eric just dropped the ball, went right through his hands. It was a nice pass by Butcher. So third down now for the Matadors. About seven yards to go. The ball's at the 23-yard line. Carlisle back in the ball game now for the Monsoons. Butcher against sets. They give to Carlisle. Carlisle trying to get off tackle. Nothing doing. Gains about three yards before being brought down. It's going to be a fourth down for the Monsoons now. They'll have to kick it away. Actually, on that play, Carlisle went off left tackle, broke to the outside, and he tripped over his own left offensive tackle, Sean Alexander, which uh, basically brought him down. He really wasn't tackled. He tripped over Alexander's foot. Otherwise, he may have gotten that first down. So fourth and short for the, for the Monsoons, about two yards to go. And the Monsoons again showing punt. To punt is Tony Sciola, the tight end, 6'2", 215 pounder. And it seems like the Matadors are dropping deep. Number five, Jack Brooks was the return man, however, there was no return to be had. The ball goes out of bounds. Not a very good punt, Mike. Looking for the officials are gonna mark this thing. Not a very good punt at all. In fact, it was a very bad, very, very poor punt. I mean, it's right at the 50-yard line. What was that, a 10-yard punt, 12-yard punt? Yeah, it wasn't very good at all. I knew it was gonna be telling when I see the official walking up. It didn't even gain that much, Mike, because it was fourth and two. Yeah, that's right. And you see where they stick it. If 
probably about a three-yard gain, three-yard uh, net. You know, Mayfair has come out a little stiff, a little tight in the first series, and they've, you know, Larmada has a tremendous opportunity here with, with the first possession at midfield. First and 10 for the Matadors, and again, we'll see what's happening here with Hugo Corral making his second, this is the second time back. Hugo gaining five yards on the carry. Corral again with 2,000 all-purpose yards last season and leading his team to the Division Eight Championship game, which the Matadors hosted. See here on the replay, play again. Hugo will be brought down by Forrest Carlisle right up the middle, and number 42, the linebacker for Mayfair, Ryan Smith. Hugo on his first carry of the year, gained about six or seven yards. That's a nice confidence builder. Yeah, actually, this ball game last, last week he was uh, 71 yards gained and 11 carries, so not a bad average, actually, a little over nine yards, I guess, on the evening. The give again goes to Corral. Corral wrapped up this time. Nice stop there. Number 91, B.J. Amuda. He's a lot bigger than 5'9", 185, I'll tell you that. Excellent defensive play by number 91 from Mayfair. B.J. Amuda breaks, basically wards off the block, didn't even phase him, worked through it, and made the tackle on Corral. Excellent defensive play by 91. Yeah, I was on the field before the game, Mike, and of course, Amuda, they have 5'9", 185. 185, possibly. 5'9", no way. No, he's more like 6'1". He's okay. uh, six, uh, maybe 6'2". Yeah, he's, 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 he's a big kid. He's a big kid. Yeah, he, might, he probably does go over 200. I don't know what whose statistic that is, height, weight. Brooks and Rudiger to the near side. Nobody lined to the far side. It's an eye formation. Nicolini in the backfield along with Hugo Corral. Cox, the quarterback, to give to Corral. Corral stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Dropped for a loss. Forrest Carlisle making the tackle. Carlisle drops Corral back for a two-yard loss. That was a great defensive alignment. Carlisle lines up. Keen on Hugo. As you can see here on the replay, Carlisle will basically blitz, blitz, shoot the gap, and he basically gets the ball gets the ball same time Hugo Corral gets the ball, drops him for about a two, three yard loss. Excellent anticipation by Forrest Carlisle from Mayfair High School. So the Matadors now, pardon me, having some trouble moving the ball. There's 8.34 left here in the first quarter. There is no score. We have a kind of fourth and seven now for the Matadors. They're gonna go for it. I guess it's a bad part of the field to be punting out of as Mayfair demonstrated. Split back formation, Hugo Corral, Nicolini in the backfield. The officials stop play. And usually, Mike, when it's this soon, somebody moved. For too much time. Yeah, delay. they're going to say delay game. Delay game, yep. That's going to be five. So it's going to be now fourth and 12 now. And I'm sure the Matadors will have to augment their play calling here. Well, you know, that's a mental breakdown, Rich, that good teams don't usually make because it basically cripples your opportunities. I mean, uh, La Mirada was in an excellent situation to go ahead and get that first down, but with the mental breakdown now, they've got the five-yard penalty because of the uh, delay of game down, and now they have to punt. So the Matadors kick it away. <coughs> I believe that's Rudiger. Nice kick. Every Ball was not called for a fair catch. However, Eric Atherton finally gets a handle on it, and it's going to be Mayfair football. Uh, at about the 12-yard line of the monsoon. Actually, there was some confusion there between Atherton and Carlisle. No one really called it. At the last minute, Atherton decided to try and catch it, and he actually dropped it. But fortunately, the ball bounced right back up in his hands, and Mayfair was able to recover the fumble. They were very lucky on that play. First and 10 for the monsoons. They actually held La Mirada pretty well. Yeah, they did. It was a lousy punt. La Mirada gains just three yards, and they lose. Actually, it was a minus two because of the penalty. And Mayfair's got to feel good about that. Well, I think on the first series, Mayfair was more a function of tightness, a little bit of, you know, trying to feel the situation out, and they're just a little tight right now. But but actually, La Mirada did have some things going, and then uh, Mayfair had some various great defensive plays by um, Carlisle, by B.J. Amuda. Uh, 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 Amuda. Yes. So they made some nice defensive plays to force La Mirada to punt. Travis Penn in the backfield at fullback. Carlisle flanks him. Two receivers out wide. The give goes to Penn. Penn, nothing doing. Stopped at the line. Making the stop for La Mirada. Trying to get a number for him. Looked like number 42, I believe, Rich. Adam Hurrah. See if we can get in the replay. Hurra and Libra both in on the stop. Let's see if we see that again. Yeah, well, he basically just lifts him right up off his, off the, uh, off his feet and drove him back. I guess we're not going to get a replay on that. That was a nice defensive play by number 42. Good defense, but a, a yard gain just the same. Second and nine now for the Monsoons. Their second possession here of the first quarter. Again in the eye. 
They give the pen again. Penn slips the tackle. Penn working his way across the 20, down to the 22. It looks like Penn might have got the first down. Very close. Riding him down, Libra, and also number 45, Scott Sampson. Yeah, Scott Sampson, Tim Halleck, Libra. That was a host of defenders here making the tackle. We'll see here in the replay, Rich. The handoff basically just a delay right up the middle. A cutback breaks to the inside, 45, and a host of tacklers from La Mirada High School. I tell you what, Rich, I'm impressed with La Mirada, I mean, excuse me, with Mayfair's approach. They're mixing it up very good. A little run left, run right, delay up the middle, pass. You know, they're, they're mixing it up where they're not allowing La Mirada to get really key anybody. Interesting tonight on the field, uh, Bill Clark, one of the officials. He's the uh, CIF guy, administrator. First down for Mayfair. They just did get the first down. Aldine signals. And first and 10 now for the Monsoons. Just underway here at Bellflower High School. This is the home field for Mayfair High. Not a bad crowd here tonight, and it is early. People still filing in. Interesting, Rich. Mayfair does not have a bench on their sidelines for the players to sit on. Don't need it. <laughs> they only have 35 players. First and 10. Full house backfield. Somebody's running with the ball. The give looks like Penn. And it is Penn. Penn. I'm trying to see what he got. He got about eight yards. They're going to mark it at the 35. At the 30. Sure, here on the replay, Rich. Pentagon right tackle. Watch big number right here. The guard pulls and the trap play and blocks number 51, Mono Salcedo. But Salcedo plays off the block, tackles Penn, but not until he gains about six or seven yards downfield. Nice offensive play there. So it's second down for the Monsoon, second and three. Trying to put a drive together here. Get some points. Just underway here in the first quarter of play. Long count by Butcher. They give the pen. And Penn tried to get the first down cheaply. It didn't happen. About a half yard gain, maybe a yard. The heart of the Lombardo defensive line stopping it. And Xavier Lebrija is doing an outstanding job so far for Lombardo, number one. He's been on at about four tackles already in this drive. Yeah, Xavier, nice, nice film. Basically just shot the gap and stuffed the hole very good, not allowing Mather to get the first down, bringing it third down in about one, one and a half. This is a big play here for the Monsoons. They don't want to have to punt again. Penn and Carlisle line up in the I formation. Butcher gives to Carlisle. Carlisle is stuck very, very close to the first down marker. Matter of fact, I think he got it. Depends on the spot. Once again, brought down by number one for La Mirada High School, Xavier Labria. Two tackles in a row. Let's show here in the replay, Rich. Hand up to Carlisle. Going off the right side of the line, little counter trap there. Bria comes in with some help from Mano Salcido, number 51. First and ten now, again, another tight first down got by the Monsoon. I formation set, Penn and Carlisle to give us to Carlisle. Carlisle trying to follow Penn. Penn can get no penetration. And Carlisle run out of bounds. Nicely there by Scott Sampson, the defensive back. Tell you what, Rich, though, the players that made that play happen were number 44, number 51, and number 50 for La Mirada High School. They all stuffed the gaps, jammed the holes, and forced Carlisle wide. And then, number, of course, number 45, Scott Sampson is able to run him out of bounds. We'll see here on the handoff, Butcher to Carlisle off the right side. Watch all the gaps just being filled. There you go, number 44, number 51, 56. They're all shoot the gaps, jam the holes up, and of course, 45 Sampson runs him out of bounds. Excellent Sampson defensive Sampson just play. staying with him. And back in the eye formation goes Carlisle and Penn. Butcher again with the long count. Butcher gonna put it up. Looks, has time, throws, incomplete. Ball is tipped and rolls harmlessly away. It's gonna bring up second, uh, Check that, third and 10 now. Butcher was hammered just as he released the ball by Junior Mossy, number 31 for La Mirada High School. Brings it now down to third and about 10. Third and 10 now. It's gonna be a big play, Mike, for the Monsoons. So far, Mayfair's had more success running the ball than they have passing. Big third and 10 play. La Marauder showing some blitz. There's a little double play action fake there. 
Butcher throws, has a man wide open, incomplete. Eric Atherton was wide open, Mike, and I don't understand why he didn't catch that football. I think he was too wide open. <laughs> I don't think he realized that he had a great opportunity there. Atherton, I'll tell you what was impressive on that play, though. Butcher rolls out to his left. He's right-handed, away from his strength. Watch us here in the snap. He rolls out to his left. He runs away from the blitz. It's all jamming up in the middle. Lofts the ball over. Atherton's wide open. It looked like it just went right through Atherton's hands. For some reason, he was unable to catch that ball. It looked like it was perfectly thrown. Very impressive by Butcher throwing on the run across his body. Brings to fourth down. They'll have to punt. Pardon me? Yes, fourth down. Last, this kick is much better than the first one. Taking it is Brooks from the 31. Brooks trying to get to the outside. Cannot get it. He's brought down right away at the 31-yard line. Good coverage by Eric Atherton of Mayfair. Nice special teams play by Mayfair. Eric Atherton gets down there quickly to make the tackle on Brooks before he's able to get anything going. Lamrata's ball. They'll take over on their own 30-yard line or 30-and-a-half-yard line. See what kind of drive is going to be able to sustain now in their second possession. So far, Mayfair hasn't been able to do much. They've had much, much more success running the ball than they have passing, and Butcher is a, a prolific passer. That's right. Here come the, the Matadors. Cox at quarterback, Corral at tailback, and, of course, the fullback is Nicolini. And they have the wide receiver split wide. Jack Brooks goes in motion, headed the opposite way. Cox pitches to Corral. Corral has trouble getting the handle on it. Funny does. Tries to cut back. Does nothing. Hugo Corral is dropped by B.J. Amuda. And that's going to be a loss of a couple of yards on the play. That was an outstanding play by B.J. Amuda. He wards off the block. He strings the play out of the sideline. See here on the replay, if we can get it here, show the pitch to Hugo. Starts to his right. Watch 91. I'm going to just all of a sudden show up, and as well as assisted by number 57 in on the play, James Elliott. But, but 91, B.J. strung the play out stood with his blocker, shedded him, and just shot in and made the tackle, forcing the play. Excellent defensive play. Corral really took a long time getting a handle on the ball, and again, Elliott getting in there quickly, making the tackle, along with Amuda. Loss is going to bring up second down. We'll call it 13. Cox rolls, looks, lets it fly, has it complete. Close to the first down marker there, Jack Brooks on the receiving, and I think Jack got it. That was an excellent rollout pass by Cox on the run. Brooks wide open. I'll tell you what, though, number 24 for Mayfair High School, Chris Reamer, was oh so close in knocking that pass down. He barely missed, but, but Brooks was able to haul the pass in by Cox, which was an excellent pass. If it wasn't perfectly thrown, Reamer would have knocked it down. Good for 14 yards and a first down. First and 10 for the Matadors. Ball is at the 41-yard line of La Mirada. Again in the eye formation of the Matadors. Nicolini now is the tailback to give the Nicolini. Nicolini slammed, but not after gaining four hard fought yards, making a stop is Ryan Smith for the Monsoons, only a junior. The initial hit, though, was by Forrest Carlisle, slowed Nicolini up, then Ryan Smith came in and cleaned up on the play. Show here on the replay, Rich. He'll hand off to Hugo, breaking off to the left side, breaking back up the middle, watch Carr. There you go with Ryan Smith dropping... Just Hugo hanging on. Actually, Carlisle. Second and six after the four-yard gain. Matadors back in a split-back formation. Looks like Nicolini and Corral in the backfield. Quick pass, complete to Rudiger. And Rudiger gets the first down and then some. He's chased out of bounds, and he's going to be chased out at the 43-yard line where he'll be first and 10 for La Mirada in Monsoon Territory. Three-step drop by Cox, the quick hitch to Rudiger, a nice gain of about six or seven yards initially on the pass, and then Rudiger becomes a runner and, and gains another four, five, six yards, making it a very nice offensive play. Looks like La Mirada's on a little drive here now, Rich. They got some momentum going. First and 10 at the 43 of the Monsoons. They come out. In an eye formation. And Luciano Nuquez now is the fullback to get the Nicolini. And the ball is fumbled forward. Looks like the Monsoons have recovered, and they have. So a big break early on in the ball game for Mayfair. They recover the fumble, and they're going to have it first and 10 from the 35-yard line of Mayfair. Tur 
turnovers will kill any any kind of drive you've got here. Watch here on the replay. The handoff to Nicolini has a nice run up the middle. Gets st stuck there for whatever reason. The ball squirts out, rolls up field, and Mayfair recovers the ball on their own 35-yard line. Excellent field position. Too bad it puts a halt to Lamarada's fine drive that they had sustained here. Actually, it was Nukes who was, looked like he was going to get the carry, and never happened. First and 10 for the Monsoons. Ball at the 35-yard line. Butcher under center. Carlisle and Penn in the eye formation. To give to Carlisle. Carlisle gets nothing. Matter of fact, he loses a yard. Lamarada. Good defense there. Van Hootie making the stop. Alama number 31, Junior Mayosi. Van Hootie, Junior Mayosi, and also Xavier Labria. All three kids in on the tackle. The play was a handoff right up the middle. Number nine, who recovered the fumble for Mayfair. Abraham. Abraham. Benyam Abraham. So Mayfair, again, coming out in the in the eye. They have a couple of wide receivers stacked to the near side. Butcher throws over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for number 82, Sean Ward. And it could be to bring up third down. It looked like Ward didn't run his pattern properly because uh, Butcher had the ball thrown way beyond four or five yards from his curl when he stopped and curled. So it looked like the pattern was run either wrong or Butcher read the wrong pattern. Third and 10 for the Monsoons. Again at the 35 yard line. That's where this drive started. Ten back in the ball game now, along with Carlisle in the backfield. They're in the I formation. Delay give there to Carlisle. It's not going to pull the Matadors back to the original line of scrimmage. Goes Carlisle and making the stop for La Mirada is Hura along with Junior Mayosi. Junior and Mayosi and Hura again on 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 the play. It looks like they try to do a little delay run here. A little delay up the middle. Didn't fool Hera or Mayosi. So to bring a fourth down and ten for the Monsoons, they'll have to punt coming into the ball game now. Number 11, Tony Sciola. And deep for Lamarado will be Ryan, uh, excuse me, Jack Brooks. And that's going to end the first quarter with the score. Nothing, nothing. We'll be back after this. the house well apparently it's showing there a monsoon right now nobody's rocking the house it's nothing nothing but a good ball game just the same right now we got nothing but donuts zero zero la Mirada and mayfair one of the best teams mayfair's had in probably 20 years credit mike fitch We're pumping some new blood and some life into this program this program's had a lot of problems another kick line drive gonna jack brooks is gonna get it to 35 and that's where he was standing originally and Brooks just decides to step aside, and it'll be first and 10 for La Mirada. Another poor kick. Mayfair is very fortunate that they got a bounce on that one, but they got some play on it, but uh, they're going to have to hey, do something about their here's punter. A, here's a shot of the guy I'm talking about right here, Mike Fitch, one of the brightest football minds in the area. Um, Other than you, of course. Of course. Well, yeah, that goes without saying. Everybody knows that. But, you know, Fitch really a good guy. Um, a lot of fun to play for is what I hear from everybody. Real the player's guy, coach, He's huh? the guy to play for. Yeah, he turns everything into a party. First and ten for the Matadors. Corral back in the ball game. They give to Hugo. And Hugo drop for a loss. Again, Muta. There he is. Making the stop. And PJ Muta. Yeah, he's going to be dropped for a loss of three yards now. They're still walking back. Maybe four. I don't know. Let's go down the field with Chris. Chris Anderson has a report for us. Chris? Hey guys, great to be here tonight. As you can tell by the score, this game has been a defensive struggle, 0-0 tie. And if you had noticed on the punts, I saw the quarterback for 
for Mayfair, number 13, Brian Butcher, doing the long snapping. As an expert in long snapping, I don't know if I want my quarterback doing that because the defensive linemen love to tee off on him because his head down. So, I don't know. It's questionable, but he's doing a great job. Back to you. Again, it's going to take some time for Toronto to get off track tonight. Mike split back formation, Nicolini, and the pass out to Halleck. Halleck catches, Halleck's out of bounds, and Tim Halleck really didn't gain any yardage, Mike. Maybe one, maybe, at most. And you know, I, I, I want to comment on that last, the previous play, the previous previous defensive play by Mayfair, B.J. Muta, number 91. He's an outstanding defensive player. Boy, he, tell you what, he comes off that line, really sheds the blocks extremely well. He's very strong and very agile. He gets off blocks well and gets into the play with a lot of, uh, a lot of burst, a lot of uh, zest. 91, B.J. Muta, an outstanding defensive player so far for Mayfair High School tonight. Matadors come back out again. The pass was good for zero. Maybe a yard. I mean, what is that? Third and 12 now. Corral in the backfield with Nicolini. They go in the split back formation. Rudiger to the near side. Cox drops. Cox with some time over the middle. Has it complete to Brooks. Brooks juggled it like three or four times and finally made the catch. And it's a first down for the Matadors. Outstanding catch. Outstanding concentration by Brooks. Beautiful pass by Cox because he was leveled as he, as he caught the ball. We'll show here on the replay. Cox, I mean... Cox drops back, sees Brooks over the middle, releases, excellent concentration, like boom, he's jammed right there by Reamer. For a, for a moment there, he loses the ball, gains his concentration back and brings it back in. Excellent concentration by Brooks, nice pass by Cox. Good, good call by the official, he did catch the ball before he hit the turf. So first down for La Mirada, keeping it alive, and they're at the Matador 48-yard line. Again in the eye, Nicolini and Corral, a little fake to Corral. And the ball's fumbled as Nicolini had it. And the Monsoons are going to get another turnover. That's the second one of the first half. Ron Marana shooting shoot themselves in the foot. Two turnovers, two drives, and two turnovers. So yep. it'll be first and 10 for Mayfair now. They're going to get the ball in pretty good field position. They're going to start the La Mirada 40, 48, actually. Very good field position. Yeah, we'll see if they can do something with it. We have 10-27 uh, left here in the first half of play. There is no score. can't turn the ball over, Rich, if you're going to be an effective offensive football team. Penn in the backfield at fullback, along with Carlisle. Butcher, the quarterback, one receiver out to the far side. they got ten guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Butcher's pass is complete. Out to the 44-yard line on the receiving end of that ball. Number 82, Sean Ward. Short gain, second down. Brought down by Rudiger, number 84 for La Mirada. Rich, you know, La Mirada's anticipating Mayfair's run offense, and they've got anywhere between eight to ten guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage on almost every snap of the ball. Let's see if Mayfair is able to read that butcher and have some kind of audible called where you got some isolation one-on-one, -on -one, maybe do a deep go pattern. Second and a long five or a short six. Everyone to look at it. To give this time, that's Let number 34. And Let might have gained one, might have gained two. We have a late flag popping up. We're going to have a dead ball foul, and it's going to go against Mayfair. Let was brought down by Sampson. As you can see here on the replay, Let will break off to the left side, the t left side of the offensive line. Sampson. Masso and Labria all converge on the tackle, bringing him down for about maybe what? Four or five yard gain? Not much. No, not quite that much at all. Actually, he got about two yards. Yeah, not even. What's the call here? <laughs> Pardon me, they haven't even uh, spot the ball yet and they're still discussing it. What do you get about a yard? Mayosi did a good job of keeping that thing in. It's a personal foul. It's going against Mayfair. And then we have a personnel foul, probably going to get Islam or they're going to oh, offset it. it. So why throw it? Just go up and warn the athletes and tell them, knock it off. Next time you're out of here. So we'll waste a little bit of time here. And bring a third down, four, or a short three, or long three, whatever you want to call it there. It's in between the markers. And the ball's at the 31-yard line. Mayfair's going to have to be more effective on their passing scheme here, Rich. Larmont is just lining up, anticipating the run with that eight, nine-man front. 
they're basically challenging Mayfair to say, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to throw the ball with success. Otherwise, we're going to just jam all the gaps, jam all the holes, and just make it very difficult for you to run on us. The Monsoon stack it up heavy to the far side, wide out. Little play action. And here comes a sack, nice and clean. Junior Mayosi, and Mayosi was untouched as he came in, kept his focus, and he took down Butcher. Mayosi comes from Butcher's blind side. Butcher not even detecting, he's even in sight. So show here on the replay, Butcher will drop back, not even looking to his right side. Mayosi comes in off the left corner, untouched, and just levels Butcher for a major, major loss. Butcher should have had some kind of feel for that pressure. He had no feel whatsoever, and Mayosi drops him for the big loss, bring it to the fourth down in about what 15 too many Mayosi one of the down. better athletes on the ball club at for La Mirada one of the pure athletes and once again coming in the punt for Mayfair Tony Sciola oh <laughs> ball heights way over his head Sciola can't have it and Sciola trying to pick it up and the ball should be dead right there they cannot advance it and it's going to be first down for the Matadors at the Mayfair 12. What a big break for the Matadors. The ball was just a bad snap all the way. And again, Sciola just could not hang on to it. Mayfair's having some major difficulties on their special teams. They have been rocky all night so far with the special teams. Like Chris said, back Butcher is the long... I think that's creating some problems for Mayfair. Well, Coach Fitz, you see him right there, just kind of scratching his head, kind of wondering what's what's going on out there. He's, he knows that's going to come back to haunt him later. Great opportunity here for Lombrada now. Oh, tremendous. 15-yard line of Mayfair. Actually, about the 13-yard line. Al Dean calls a timeout on the field. He's the official for tonight. The referee, the white hat. Manadors have a first and 10 at the 14 of Mayfair by virtue of the turnover. Big number 75 for La Mirada High School, Josh Brooks, 6'4", 280, only a junior. A lot of promise for that young kid. Yeah. Cox gives to Corral. Corral up the middle. Corral fights his way down inside the 10, down to about the 7. And Hugo Corral is, by his standards, and again, we can only go by his standard. By his standards, he's really having an off night. Yeah, even though that was about a four or five yard gain, brought down by Ryan Smith, number 42 for Mayfair, once again on another tackle. Between Ryan and Harry, you can see here the handoff to Hugo up the middle, breaks back to the inside, and Ryan Smith brings him down after about a four or five yard gain. And we're gonna take a break in the action as we have a player down on the field with 7.28 left here in the first half of play. There is no score. Welcome back. What a what a devastating loss. If this kid's out for any length of time, it's Carlisle. He's walking off under his own power now, but still doesn't look good. We see Hugo Corral now. Hugo gets dropped for a loss of about a yard or two. Absolutely no gain, but Carlisle's the big thing. Right now he's laying flat on his stomach on the sideline, and the doctors are working on him. Hugo hit initially by Travis Penn, number 35, and number 57, James Elliott from Mayfair, made the initial contact on Hugo. Bring him down for virtually about a, what, a one-yard loss, it looks Not like. Not a one-yard loss. I mean, third down now for the Matadors 35. Hugo just doesn't look like he has the acceleration, that explosiveness, that elusiveness that he had last year. Take it from somebody who's had knee surgery, although Hugo didn't. When you come back from those type of injuries, man, you baby those things. Yeah. It's going to take a while before you can really explode and trust it. Third and five, big play here for the Matadors. In motion goes Corral. Cox. Looks, pulls up, decides he's going to run, goes up the middle, Cox is in for the touchdown, yeah, no. Looks Very like close. About the half yard line. Yeah. Let's not forget now, Damon Cox was the backup running back last year to Hugo Corral, so it's not like Cox is shy about running. Well, he has great athletic skills. He uh, is able to feel, actually that was a play call, Rich. I mean, that was an actual delay draw by the quarterback. 
a beautiful call there down in that territory. He's on one, what, not even, by about the six inch line. Well, it's first and goal. The Matadors can't punch it in here. They just hang it up. Nicolini, Corral, high formation. Rudiger, split wide. Corral gets in, put a touchdown. The Matadors draw first blood tonight. One yard touchdown run by Hugo Corral. Impressive drive by Lamrata, even though it was only about a 14 yard drive. They sustained a lot of uh, power on this drive, being able to move Mayfair at will. Mayfair is basically, up to this point, have been their own worst enemy with the turnovers and the, and the poor special teams play they've had thus far. They're gonna have to get on track. They're gonna have to involve a little bit more of their passing philosophy in their offense. The extra point attempt, Ben Orr. And Orr splits the uprights. Seven nothing the score. We'll be back after this. to Balflower High School, and I'm, I'm trying to explain to Mike Martin, we got Mervyn Driggs up here doing the PA announcing, and I'm trying to explain to Mike about this couch chip thing. Couch chip bingo, Mike. They get they get this, <laughs> on the field bingo. somewhere, they get these big squares, I imagine, with these numbers on them, and they let the cows run on the field. How dung. And so wherever they dump that. it, that's the number right. you get. Wonderful. You, know, you just hope you, you have it, you have that number they dumped on. I can hardly wait to see it. I, I think that's the best way to uh, explain it in English. Sounds pretty exciting to me. Without having to have too much innuendo. <laughs> Travis Penn's back in the ball game now for Mayfair, and that's a good sign, and Penn's gonna chase this ball into the end zone, touchback. And Mayfair's gonna start again from their own 20, where it is seven nothing right now in favor of La Mirada. And that was the lead there, was taken by virtue of Hugo Corral's one yard run. Let's see what Mayfair comes out with now, what kind of offensive attack they're gonna choose to pursue here. I mean, they've tried the running game pretty much throughout this first half and it, they've had some success but they have to be able to pass the ball as well and they've had zero success doing that yeah pass it deep they've done a lot of little dump stuff that I, got, that's what i would do throw semi deep at least you know 20 yards off the line of you got one-on-one -on -one coverage you only got one safety back there shoot go get it carlisle's all alone in the backfield and it looks like they're going to do just that they have three receivers out wide butcher throws is incomplete Pass was intended for number 24, Chris Reamer. And the incomplete pass will bring up second and 10 now for Mayfair. Clock, clock is stopped with 5.55 left in the first half. Reamer just a little out pattern, about five or six yard out pattern. Butcher just a little off on the pass, although Reamer did get a hand on it. You know, in the old adage, if you can touch it, you should be able to catch it. But thus far, Butcher has not had any success whatsoever in this passing game. Second and 10 now for the Monsoons. Again, they're stacking that up heavy, that wide receiver. Pan alone in the backfield is the fullback. And either somebody moved or the Matadors were off sides. It looked like Mayosi was running up to a line to fake a blitz. Actually, it was Xavier Labria, number one, the inside linebacker who faked the blitz. He was called off sides for it, though. Sure, that was uh, one and not 31. Or it was one. It may have been 31 as well, but I saw one. Abria shooting up there. Uh, Roddy, we have uh, second down five now. And Carlisle all alone in the backfield. As Reamer goes in motion. Butcher throws, passes, incomplete. Reamer trying to tip it to himself and just couldn't get enough. 
And the pass goes incomplete. It's going to bring a third and five now for the Monsoon. That pass was there. Reamer should have caught that one. That was an easily catchable pass. Show here on the replay. Reamer will just take a, I mean, Butch takes just a three or four step drop. Reamer's doing a little out pattern there, and he was right on the money. Reamer just did not catch the ball. Lack of concentration. Third down, five to go. For the Monsoons, they want to keep things alive here with 5.49 left in the first half. They need some points. Ten in the backfield all alone. They stack it heavy to the near side. Three receivers. Butcher gives to Penn. Penn going the opposite way. Penn brought down. Junior Mayosi brings them down, but it looks like First down yardage for Penn. Impressive. And Mayfair. Impressive play by Junior Mayosi. Watch this on the replay, Rich. He'll come all the way from the backside, trail the play to bring Travis Penn down from behind. Excellent defensive play by Mayosi. That's a lot of uh, dedication, a lot of desire there. Yeah, coming, Junior, coming Junior's the backside. Definitely one of the, the better athletes on the ball club. And that shows you why. Speed and strength. First and 10 now for the Montoons. Ball at the 30, looks like 31, maybe the 32. The give, I believe, the let gets nothing. Brought up for a loss. Who was that? By Mayosi again? No, brought down initially by Mayosi, number 31, coming in from the backside, trailing, trailing the play again, although he had, did have some help for number 44, Manuel Alvarado. But initially, the initial hit was by, by uh, 31, the dominant defensive force so far for La Mirada High School, Junior Mayosi. Clock running, 4.46 to go. First half, 7 at the La Mirada. Second down, 11 is the call for Mayfair. Carlisle on in the backfield. Butcher with some time, lets it throw, has Reamer out in the flat. Reamer trying to get to the outside and up, but couldn't break away, but gets the first down. Now we're going to have a flag, and this one's going to definitely go against the Monsoons. There you go, that time it worked. Nice pass pattern. Nice catch, beautiful pass by Butcher. Reamer brings it in. Ac actually, show here in the replay, you'll see Butcher drop back. Reamer do the nice break to the sideline right here. Catch and actually, Samson misses the tackle. Oh. What? Oh, okay, yeah, 58. 58. What he did was after the play was over, as as the play was ending, he stuck his leg on, tried to trip a matador running out of bounds. Yeah, that was silly. And luckily, the official saw it. Actually, the missed tackle was by number 25 for Lamarada, Tim Halleck. Run that back again, guys. He just overran Reamer. That's interesting. It's a stupid penalty. If you're Mayfair, I know Fitch is going to be upset. So is Woody Grayson. Personal foul being called. I think they give him the first down, though, don't they? Yeah, it was dead ball. Yeah. Dead ball foul. Watch this. Here's the play. As it stops back. Reamer, a little out pattern. Turn in. Halleck misses the tackle. Oh, yeah. Now, that, now that's blatant. That is blatant right there. You can't do that. But, you know, I think he flipped over. I don't think he did no. it uh, intentionally. No, come on, Mike. He stuck his leg out. What is bad that? Call. Bad call by the ref. Hey, save that play. We're going to look at that one again. Now, you're, you're out of your mind. Bad call you know, by blind the ref. Man. Timeout call by Mayfair. Okay, let's keep it here. Run that back. I want to see this 58 flip, Mike. You're going to have to prove this to me. Oh, come on. Face. Watch. Hey, Merlin, come here. I want you to get here now and let him look at this thing. Do this? Is this 58, like, trying to get out of the way? Oh, you or can't see it now. No, right here. Oh, this guy. What is that? Oh, I'm, I'm what is No, 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 no. What is that? Oh, he's just oh. checking his knees. What is that? Is that a good call, Greg? <laughs> okay, oh, all right. Okay. I thought you were talking about him. Thank you. Look, look at Mike Fitch. He's upset about it. He's going, hey, man, you know, that cost him. There was a first down up here at the... 43, now they're going to be way back over here, deep in their own end. As they used to say in practice, the big guy in the yeah. sky doesn't lie. Okay, well, we were looking at, you were looking at the wrong guy. I was looking at the wrong guy. That was 58 sticking his, yeah, he's sticking his leg out, trying to trip the guy. <laughs> he was trying to He's running full speed, the guy's sticking his leg out. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. Yeah. But, hey, the guy's on the <laughs> muscle spasm. Yeah, the guy's only a junior, so you got to give him, cut him some slack on well, that. And that's why he's on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> I like to give, I like to look he did afterwards, sticking his arms up like, what, what I do? Yeah, what I do? Me? No, it couldn't be me. I wouldn't do that. Okay, I think we've pretty much uh, taken a look at that penalty from every every way possible. We exhausted that one. <laughs> yeah. Reverse yeah. angle, Reverse forward angle. angle, side angle. Yeah. First to 25 now for the Monsoons due to the penalty. They're way deep in their own end. 
Long way to go. Butcher pass is incomplete, and I don't know where it was going, but right as the pass dropped, the flag came flying from the back judge. Let's take, let's go down to Chris Anderson see what Chris has for us. Chris. Hey guys, I got an injury report on the Mayfair side. Uh, junior wide receiver Eric Atherton is out with a dislocated shoulder. He's under ice right now. They're going to give him some treatment at halftime to see if he can come back for the second half. Back to you. Butcher, wow. Butcher, Butcher was very lucky on that last play. You know, he, he, his man, he, there's four guys, four La Mirada defenders around Bremer, and the closest guy to the ball was the La Mirada defender. He was very fortunate the ball did not get intercepted. Yeah, but now you're going to see why the ball was thrown nowhere. It was because the pass interference penalty, apparently somebody was slowing him up. Maybe it was 58. Maybe he's trying to kick him again. <laughs> 58 out there tripping people again. Oh, man. That's Travis Frost we're joking about out there. We're only kidding, Travis. Yeah. No, it's just a reaction. You know, Mike, I've probably done that a few times in my high school career. I probably, you know, More than a few times, I'm sure. I know I stepped on somebody at St. Paul one time on the sideline. <laughs> Mayosi. Stop along with Adam Hura, number 42, actually, for the Matadors. Actually, Adam Hura was the one who made the tackle. Mayosi got leveled by number 71, big Sean Alexander. Mayosi's coming in to make the tackle, and Alexander pulls, hits him from the blind side, and just drops him. Yeah, but if he doesn't do that, Hurd doesn't make the tackle, because he'll get he'll get dropped. Burra had made the tackle before Mayosi had gotten there, actually. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're upset because you missed that last call. It was right in front of you. It'll be second down. They're saying second and 12. So I got to say a two-yard loss on that last play. Head in the backfield at fullback. He's the lone back to give the pen. Pen bowling forward, Mike. They're not going to get it done like this. No, they're going to have to go back to that passing. Brought down again by Xavier Labria. Pen after he gained about three or four yards, maybe. You know, Mayfair did have a little success with the passing. I don't know why they want to go away from it. Maybe they're going to try to just run it down the field, Mike, and score with little time left. 3-10 left here in the second quarter. That's right. How are you going to question Fitch? He's 5-1 and one already. This is true. One more game, and they're guaranteed a winning season. Phenomenal. Just two short years. Not even two full years. Actually, this is, a, this is the middle of the second year here for Mike Fitch. Butcher wow. did all he could to stay in the pocket. Got a little nervous. Threw the ball incomplete. Going to bring up a third down or fourth down. This fourth down now. Fourth down. Another drop pass by Reamer. I Butcher was right on the money. So here in the replay, Butcher dropped back. Reamer watch, does a little curl in. Watch the pocket start to collapse. Yeah, but he hangs in there tough. Yeah. Rifles it there, and Reamer just drops the pass. Right there, indeed. Nice pass by Butcher. So fourth down now, and back in the ball game, Tony Sciola. Sciola has had an eventful night so far. Had a three-yard punt, and then he had one snapped over his head. This one's high, too, and this is a tall kid. It's blocked by who else? Is that Junior Mayosi? Sure is. Yep. He's doing nothing to hurt his reputation here. Junior Mayosi coming, storming and blocking the punt. I'll tell you, my concern is this. Does Mayfair not have anybody better than their first string quarterback, Butcher, to be the long snapper? I find that very difficult to believe. Maybe even 58 can get in there and long snap. Yeah, certainly blocked it. Show here, Butcher falls over his head. He barely catches it, but gives, gives Mayosi enough time to come in and block the punt. Once again, another turnover, another special teams blunder by Mayfair, right. giving the ball to Lamrata on Mayfair's 35-yard line. And you don't want to do that to this Lamrata ball club because they're going to sting you now. They're too good. They're too good. Too, dis too well disciplined. They execute extremely well. 7 nothing to score. Lamrata's ball, first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Nicolini and her in the back, excuse me, in Corral. And Cox, a fake. Cox keeps it. Cox trying to get to the outside and does. Gets the first down as he's run out of bounds at the 23-yard line. And again, don't forget Cox. Cox is a great running back. He's a great runner. He's, I'll, he's, I'll tell you not what they, shy at all. What they did on that is they, they've noticed that B.J. Amadon is coming down crashing hard on the, on the defensive end side. And what they did is they fake bootleg. You see him come down hard. Cox gets around the outside, gets around the end, and gets a big gainer because of the strong, aggressive defensive play by 91, B.J. Amadon. He had a trio of monsoon players chasing him out of bounds on his heels. That's what happens when you can be a little bit over over aggressive. First and ten for the Matadors. The ball looks like it's about the 24-yard line. The big, the fake to Corral. Cox is going to keep it. Cox turns back inside. Cox is brought down. Short gain for Cox, maybe two yards. Travis Penn actually did a fine job of stringing that play out, forcing Cox to break it on in. 
and number 42, Ryan Smith, comes in and makes the tackle, but Travis Penn was the one who created that whole play and gave Ryan Smith the opportunity to make the tackle based on his excellent defensive play. Timeout on the field with 159 left here in the first half of play. 7-0 La Mirada. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Everybody, welcome back to the game of the week. Richard Stray and Mike Martinez, and we're certainly glad you joined us on a pretty percent, uh, excuse me, Friday evening. And right now, the Matadors have a seven nothing lead over the Mayfair Mon Monsoons. It's second down and about nine for La Mirada. The ball's at the 23 yard line to give to Nicolini, the fullback. And Nicolini's going to be run out of bounds at the 20, but we have two flags thrown right at the quarterback. The one bounced off his back. I think there may have been some offensive holding, Rich. Yep. There you go. Offensive holding on La Mirada. Okay. Let's go down to the field with Chris Anderson. Chris, what's happening? Hey, guys. After that loss, uh, last offensive possession by the Mayfair team, they came off and Coach Tom Snow, the offensive line coach, was incensed with his offensive line and their play. The brunt of it went at the right tackle, Sean Alexander. Apparently he missed a few blocks and they had trouble and he missed a block on a blitz, which caused a sack and a fourth down punt. He's trying. He's talking to him right now, trying to turn him around and get him ready for the next series. Back to you. Hopefully, for Mayfield, there'll be a next series, yeah. Mike. Uh, Pomerata's <laughs> got the football right now. I like that, that 50 cent word that Chris used, incense. Yeah, incense. That's that UCLA education. I thought he was talking about incense at first, you know. <laughs> yeah. Incense. He's kind of permeating the place here. <laughs> 1.39 to go. Pomerata football. It is second down and 20 now. Cox swings it out to Corral. Corral picks it up. And Corral gets some yardage, Mike. Most people would have stopped after that, but the ball did bounce. It was a fumble because it was thrown behind him. It was a lateral, and there was no whistle blown. Any good football player is knows that unless the whistle is blown by the official, the play is live and, and play it through. That's, That's right. exactly what Hugo Corral did. You see here on the replay, Cox just kind of tosses over to Corral. Basically, it's a lateral. Amadon kind of gives up on Hugo because he thought it was... And then he gets nailed. Good clip, huh? <laughs> he thought it was... Um, and actually a dead ball, but it wasn't because there was no whistle blown. The Muta got taken out of the play <laughs> yeah. in the back, man. That was a, that was a bad. Good gain there by Corral. He gained six. Third and 14. Cox in the eye. Uh, or check that in the shotgun. Brooks. Brooks has interfered with all the way. There's going to be a flag on that one. Brooks was fighting his way to the end zone. What's that all about, he man? And, he and Reamer were boxing. I don't know mugged him. Reamer mugged him, but he got away with it. He sure did. That was wild. That was the subway ride, New York City. Now it's fourth down. Lamrata unable to capitalize on the turnover by Mayfair. So Mayfair did a fine job, fine defensive series here, holding Lamrata at bay. There's the time left. There's the score. We're looking at fourth and 14 now. Matadors have to punt now, and this, no, excuse me, we're going to kick a field goal, 44-yard attempt here. And the kick is up, and the kick is no good. It had the distance, it just didn't, wasn't, it was wide to the right. Oh, yeah, a little wide, a little wide. Or check that, wide to the left, wide because that's you're looking at it. Timeout on the field with 1 minute 15 seconds to go here in the first half. There's our score, 7-0. We'll be back. Excuse me, Troy Burr again. I'm the, picking the Irish. It's a 24 17, you said. You got it. There's to give to Carlisle. And Carlisle gets a yard, maybe two, as the clock continues to run. Yeah, listen, Mike. Take my advice. They're not going to, you know, not win 13 years straight. They've lost 10 straight. 14. Tied, tied 14 once. years. No, they tied a game in there. But that's not a win. That's not a loss either. Well, but they still didn't win. Breaks so it's been string. 13 years since they've tasted victory. Oh, it doesn't matter. Throw that crap out the window. It's going to be a win tomorrow for the Trojans. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Tell Notre Dame that. Okay. High formation. Carlisle and Penn. 
Clock runs, 41 seconds left. They give to Carlisle. Carlisle trying to go off tackle and gets very little. And that may have been the last play here of the, well, wait a minute. No, the flag may have yeah. been, a, may have been a, a face mask. Yep, it is. Aldine making the indication. Yeah. So, it was not inadvertent. That's another 10. Well, he was brought down by Labria, by O.C., and Alvarado. Which one of those guys actually got hold of his face mask is is the big question mark, but nonetheless, the face mask, automatic first down, 15-yard penalty. Well, either way, changes things just a little bit here with 32 seconds left. Mayfair comes out in the eye with Penn and Carlisle. You gotta just go deep, you know? Just go get it. Nope, they're gonna keep it on the ground. Short run forward. And if there's not a flag, that should be the last play here of the first half. And the first half scoring basically consisted of a Hugo Corral one-yard touchdown run with the extra point being good. And that's it, seven nothing. That last tackle by Lamarada High School, number 56 for Lamarada, Adam Van Hoot. Van Hootie. Van Hootie, there you go. Who's been playing a fine defensive game on the defensive front for Lamarada. Timeout's been called by Mayfair. And apparently they didn't want to try something. I, you know, I don't understand this, Mike. Yeah, they tried now with four seconds left. You think they would have tried it with first down on the outset? Heck yeah, throw a ball. What are you, just running, up, running a, a, a draw play? I mean, not even a draw. It was just on the dive, off tackle, period. Get a couple of yards. And now you're going to call a timeout and try to do something. I'd give it to number 58, Travis Frost, on the uh, draw play. Let him trip everybody in the end zone, <laughs> Let him trip his way in the end zone. Pick that leg out. He just happened to get caught. Yeah, he I did. feel sorry for Travis. A little he excited. Yeah. yeah, a little excited. I've done worse than that. Well, see, back then, Mike, there was no, no TV back then. Just kind of do it and kind of talk about it, and then the legend grew. <laughs> the legend grew. Yeah, heck yeah. Legend in your own mind. Huh? Now, this guy's legend. He's legendary because he's going to be on TV. You know, he's going to save this clip. He's going to tape this game. He's going to save the clip and show it to all his friends. Why show not? it to his kids. Graduation night, he'll show it up there. Heck yeah, it's my big moment in time. These idiot announcers spent five minutes talking about me. <laughs> the joke's on us. Four seconds to go. Yeah, let's see what happens. They're gonna punt, Mike. See that that big conference was 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 about the punt. Yeah, they just put a, a a back there, and it's just gonna take a knee. A uh, uh, timeout to plan this. A little surprised. Halftime here at Balfour High School. With the Matadors leading, 7-0. We're taking a break. We'll be back in a bit. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Belflora High School for tonight's contest between Mayfair and the Long Rata Matadors. Right now, the Matadors have a... 7-0 lead as we get ready to start the third quarter of play here. And the all the scoring in the first half came basically off a turnover. We had the turnover here, a fumble, I believe, Mike, on the 12-yard line, and it took uh, Hugo Corral two plays to get in the end zone. Turnover City, the first half for both teams. Let's see what the adjustments each team has made in the, at halftime. You know, football is a game of adjustments. The team that makes the proper adjustments and is able to capitalize on opportunities like turnovers usually comes out the winner. One thing you have to note is that uh, the Monsoons start 18 juniors, Mike. Here's a short kick, goes out of bounds, and it'll be up to the Matadors to see if they want to take it up to 35 or make the Monsoons kick again. We'll see what they decide. And it looks like they're going to take it up to 35. I think offensively, La Mirada basically has to continue doing what they did the first half, which was able to run the ball effectively, mix it up with some nice pass patterns effectively, have uh, Damon Cox do that fake bootleg and also do some running on the bootleg as well as the rollout. He was very effective doing all of that. So La Mirada, as I see it offensively, should stay right on the same page they were the first half. Mayfair, on the other hand, needs to, like I said, incorporate some kind of passing, some kind of passing scheme into their offense the second half to be effective. First and 10 at the 35-yard line, the Matadors will operate. Hugo Corral in the backfield, along with Nicolini to give to Corral. Corral has some daylight. Corral breaks to the outside. as one man to beat. And Hugo Corral is going to go 65 yards for a touchdown as we open the second half. How do you do? 
Touchdown, Matadors. That's the Hugo Corral of old we've been waiting to see all night. Again, last week, he had pretty good number 71 yards on 11 carries, and tonight, he's going to do a little bit better than that. Outstanding run by Hugo Corral here on the replay. The hand up, he'll break off the left side, the left side of the line, off tackle. Beautiful block by number 72 for the offensive line for La Mirada. Garcia, Leo Garcia blocking to Amada, and Hugh basically springs Hugo Corral for that huge 60-plus yard touchdown. Could have just walked in. I mean, the, the blocking schemes were just beautiful. Hugo read the blocks, cut the tail, and was off to the races. The extra point attempt is up, and the kick is good. Time out on the field with 11.49 left here in the third quarter. 14-0 La Mirada. I'd like to say once again, on that last play by Hugo Corral, that tremendous run would not have been possible if it wasn't for the outstanding block by number 72, Leo Garcia, on number 91, who's been playing an outstanding defensive game for Mayfair High School tonight, B.J. Amada. Amuda! Amuda! Amuda Amada, excuse us for butchering <laughs> that last name, but uh, Leo Garcia, outstanding block. Penn. No, that's going to be Carlisle. Carlisle stepped in the end zone. Dean didn't call him a touchback, though. And Carlisle gets his head literally ripped off. Ear pads come flying out at the 16-yard line. And Guess who? Oh, it's got to be Mayosi. Mayosi, Junior Mayosi, even on the special teams. Or so, was it Mayosi? Yeah, it was Mayosi. He's getting all the high fives and stuff on the back. Jeez, outstanding yeah, football player. You Junior's know? one of the few guys that can hit like that on this team. I'm telling you. He comes to play. First and ten for the Monsoons. And... Like I said, I think Carlisle's foot was in the end zone when he decided to take off with it, but it doesn't matter he now. He probably wishes it was now. <laughs> yeah, first and ten at the 18. Yeah, he took a shot. After that man. hit by my OC. You know, you see helmets flying. You don't really see ear pads come flying out, stuff like that, but both ear pads came out of that time. Monsoon's first possession here in the second half. The give goes to Penn. Penn gets very little. Goes forward. Defensive front doing the job for the Matadors. Mayosi in on the stop. Again, Junior Mayosi in on, in on the play, but I tell you what, number 42, Adam Hurrug, stuffed that hole on the blitz. As soon as he's, he read the run, he jammed the hole and just dropped the interference down, allowing Mayosi to come in and make the tackle. Victor Palacios, number 76, is face down on the field at the 15-yard line for Mayfair. And he looks to be seriously hurt, Mike. He hasn't moved a bit. We're going to take a break right now in the action with 11-11 left here in the third. We'll be back after this to score 14-0 La Mirada. Welcome back to Mayfair La Mirada game of the week here in the Suburban League. And we have Victor Palacios being helped off the field. He's a six foot one, 210 pound junior tackle. And he's coming up very gingerly off the field. Looks um, like it might be an ankle or a knee, Rich. Whatever it is, it's serious, man, because he laid there dead for yeah. about a good two minutes. They finally turned him over. And luckily, it's a limb and not a head or some kind of organ or something. Hopefully you know, it's not too serious. Yeah, at least the knee and limb can be fixed. Second down and nine. 11 minutes left here in the third quarter of play. 14-0 La Mirada. Butcher gives to Carlisle. Carlisle has a little bit of daylight. Carlisle with some room. 
Carlisle gets the first down. This time he followed Sean Alexander's block through the hole. Perfect. And thought maybe an 18-yard gain there, first down. Nice block by Sh Sean Elliott, James Elliott, Sean Alexander, Alexander, rather. He followed Alexander right out of that backfield. Two good blocks. Nice game by Carlisle. First down, isn't it not? Yes, it is. I'm trying to get something on Palacios, but they're hovering all around him. We cannot see too much. Looks like it's a knee, though. He's sitting. First and 10 for the Monsoons at the 29-yard line. In the I formation, Travis Penn gets the carry. Penn. Cruising his way through for three yards. Bring up second down, seven. The initial hit there by Xavier LeBray. You know, Lombard is really impressive. When they tackle, there's really, rarely do you ever see a solo tackle by one tackler on defense. Usually there's a host of defensive tacklers making the play, which is a great, great tribute to the defense and the defensive coordinator of, of getting these kids ready and together to do a lot of gang tackling, a lot of pursuit, fine team effort. Yeah, and the defensive coordinator, I think, is the guy that cheats at golf, golf over there. It's Brooks. After this next play, we'll go down to Chris Anderson on the field. He'll have something for us in just a moment here. In the I formation, we have Penn and Carlisle. Again, Butcher, quarterback. One receiver out wide to give us to Carlisle. Carlisle trying to break a tackle, does not. He's about a yard shy, maybe a half yard shy of a first down. Let's go down to the field with Chris Anderson. Chris, what's happening? Strongest guy on and off the field tonight is playing for La Mirada on defense. He's the outside backer, number 31, Junior Mayosi. You saw that kickoff where he just blew up Carlisle, knocked his helmet off, everything. He also bench presses 400 pounds and runs a 4-5-40. He's the strongest man on the La Mirada team and their leading tackler. Also, I have a follow-up on Eric Atherton. His shoulder didn't respond well, and he won't be back for the second half. Back to you. Yep, it is. It's got a tough break. That junior has followed through with all of the training and tutelage you've you've uh, shown him over the years. Hey, especially my, in your camp, my football camps, man. Yeah. That guy's there every year. Yeah, this is true. Getting better. I'm sure he'll be a number one draft choice once he comes out of the University <laughs> of Notre Dame or UCLA, either one. Well, he won't be going to either one of those places. <laughs> uh, Mayosi getting a little more accolades tonight than he, he probably is, but he's a great ball player. Lining up right now, defensive end. There he goes. Penn with the carry. Penn, and Mayosi gets up. Mayosi didn't make the tackle that time. That time it was Halleck along with number 24, Kenny Harrington. But you show here in the replay, Mayosi wards off the, the blocker, spins, and gets back into the flow, into the tackle, the pursuit. And keeps the play inside. Keeps the play inside and keeps it from breaking big. Another tremendous play by Mayosi. If I tell you what, if I'm the offensive coordinator, I'm running away from him. There's going to be a measurement here as Aldine is called time. It's very close. I, I'm going to like to say they got it. I think they did get it. By a hair. By a hair. Let's see. And the chain guys come out. Just by a hair. They got it. Half a football. First down. Yeah, be kind of... I need a Mayfair can drive the length of the field here and get some points, Mike. Make this game tight. Mike Fitz told me, and Woody Grayson also told me, they just want to keep this thing close. They want to keep it close going in the fourth quarter. Let's not forget that four of the five Mayfair wins have come from behind, two of them late in the fourth quarter. One of them, they were down against Valley Christian, 24-3 to in the fourth quarter. And they come back to win the game 25-24. Play action fake. Mayosi chasing Butcher. Pass is incomplete. Another, another drop pass. You cannot fault Butcher tonight. He's been right on several times. This time, Ryan Smith drops the ball. That's Ryan Smith's second drop of the night. You've know, you got to feel sorry for Butcher. He's been on target a number of times, and he must have had, he's had to have at least four or five drop passes tonight by his receivers. Un inexcusable. Inexcusable. It makes Butcher look a lot worse than his statistics show at this point in time in the game. Second and ten now for the Monsoons at the 40. Couch at bingo tomorrow, Mayfair, dig it. The give this time goes to number 34, Lett. Son Lett 
drop for a loss. Brought down by Don Murray, the inside linebacker. Murray hasn't played a lot tonight. Comes in for one play, makes a tackle, and goes out. That's not too bad a job. Not bad at all. Now he'll probably be interviewed by ABC in the sidelines. <laughs> or at, at worst, Chris Anderson. <laughs> They're still working on Palacios to tackle there for the like game they're, they're icing something. I'll be back. That's it. Third and 12 now. That's it. Third and very long now for the Monsoons. Obviously passing situation. Out of the eye. Three wide. Pass is too high. Incomplete. Bring up fourth down, and the Monsoons will have to punt away. Look for number 11, Tony Sciola, to come in. You've got to give credit to Adam Hura. Just as Butcher released the ball, Hura nailed Butcher. I think he actually hurried Butcher, threw him off his rhythm, which is the reason why the pass was well overthrown. Nice pressure by Adam Hura, number 42, for La Mirada High School, who's also played an outstanding game tonight. Brooks is deep at the 30. For La Mirada, Sciola will punt. Are you sure Butcher's snapping here? Uh, yes, he yeah, still he is. is. It's amazing. Quarterback is a long snapper. Ball is received at the 23-yard line. Brooks runs back, reverses his fail, gets dropped. Carlisle dropping Brooks. Back at the 21, first and 10 for La Mirada. Nice coverage by Mayfair. In fact, that's probably the first, and they're only, at this point in time, they're only good special teams play. You know, Mike, of all the places we've worked in the last couple of years, uh, this has got to be like the best press box. Nice press box. I mean, as far as viewing, it's yeah. a big one that we got here. Nice high seats. Nice big room up here. Hot tub and a big screen out back, man. Can't do any better than this. This is the big leagues. High formation set. Nicolini and Hurra. Or check that, Hurra. That was Corral, but look at Nicolini go. How did he get out there? Nicolini trying to go all the way. He has one man to beat. And he's dragged down by the shoulder pads. Nice run by Nicolini. Top of him was Chris Raymer. Huge play once again. It's kind of a fake bootleg, and you really can't follow the ball on that. And you see here on the replay, Cox Damon gets the ball. It's a quick handoff to Nicolini, who breaks up inside and breaks out to the sideline. Chris Reamer tracking him down, barely collars him on the 15-yard line. But that's kind of a deceptive play because it's a quick handoff to Nicolini, and then Cox does an excellent job of following through with his fakes. It didn't look like Nicolini was trying to describe it. He ran straight up oh, yeah, all the way down the field. Quick opener. First and 10 for La Mirada, as you said, ball at the 15-yard line. You give this time goes to Corral. Corral kind of dancing his way through inside the 10-yard line down to the 8. Actually, he's brought down by, guess who? Number 58, Travis Frost. Did he, did he trip him? The sideline kicker. <laughs> the sideline kicker. Travis Frost did on that tackle for Mayfair I'm High School, trip, number 58. Nice defensive play by Travis. <laughs> the ball down to the nine yard line for the Matadors. They're about five yards shy of that first down marker. Looking for a first and goal from the five. No, I, you know, Jeff Nicolini, some deceiving speed there. Was it just a good fake? No, he had some he had some speed. Did something there. And here goes Corral again. Corral in the end zone. Jump just shy. Very close. Ooh. He was straight up at the two, and they brought him down at close to the one-yard line. Down by Benyam Abraham, right at the, about the half-yard line. Hugo, so close for his second touchdown of the night. Looks like Larmrod is just kind of wearing him down now. Mayfair seem to have lost a little bit of their uh, spunk. It ain't over yet. This Mayfair, Mayfair ball club. Ball down about as close as it can get. Looking at the, at the cone over there, Mike, it's about six inches. Cox gets it standing up. Touchdown, La Mirada. And they go up 20 to nothing with 5.37 left in the third. Cox goes in with a nice quarterback sneak. Gain of about six or seven inches for the score. Lamrata goes up, 20 zip. And now we'll see the extra point attempt here. Cox, a one yard TD run. What's it's gonna look like in the box score tomorrow. In the attempt, the extra point. 
for La Mirada, number 80, Ben Orr. Holding, number 21, Robert Carmona. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. Time on the field. 5.37 to go in the third. 21 nothing, La Mirada. are you under? Welcome back, everybody, to Bellflower High School. Hey, listen to Driggs over here. Check this guy out. He's giving the breakdown. Very professional. Thank you, Merlin. Very well done. Hey, i got to get on to some of that cow chip contest. <laughs> cow chipping. Get, get, pull out some of that petrified stuff you got there. I told there. you. You didn't believe me. I told you. All I do is pop 250 bucks, Merlin. If you're watching the game now, get over to Mayfair. If you're watching a Saturday morning, you gotta get your you gotta get your square, man. Maybe that's, that's where do you get the cows from, Merlin? Covina. Covina, huh? The, 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 local dairy. the local dairy, Mike. The local dairy. Jersey made? <laughs> <laughs> a couple extra bales of hay. A lot of roughness tonight. Rough. We'll see that tomorrow. It's at uh, Mayfair High School, 10 o'clock. Cow, cow chip bingo. I love it. Here's a nice high kick. Looks like Penn's gonna get it from the 18 and Penn gets out to the 30. So a nice 12, quick 12 yard return there by Travis Penn. First and 10 for the Monsoons. Brought down by number nine, Art Franco and number 36, Don Murray for La Mirada High School in that kickoff. Mayfair now has to be creative. They're gonna have to come up with some kind of you know, creative approach to their offense and not be so predictable, allowing La Mirada's defense to bring eight, nine guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage, they're going to have to start putting the ball up in the air. We'll see what happens. This is monsoon time here. This is where they win all their ball games late in the game. Create some havoc out there. This is the biggest margin they've come from behind from this year, 21. See if they can do it again. There's the give to Carlisle. There's Carlisle stepping a tackle. Carlisle still on his feet. Carlisle, 13-yard gain on first down. He's out to the 43-yard line where it'll be first down for the Monsoons. Well, that's nice. Nice 11, 12-yard game for a first down. But you know what? All that does is it gets you a first down, and you eat up the clock, and you've got no score yet. You, you know, he's going to have to incorporate some passing in here. I'm just curious to see how they're going to approach it, whether they're going to do the short, quick outs, the curl-ins, or they're going to go deep. This is what people have been saying all year long. But for some reason, the Monsoons have been finding a way to get it done. Let's see if they have another match they'll come back in them this time around. They need points on this possession or forget about it. 43-yard line, first and 10. Butcher with a long count. Butcher, a little play action. Oh, man, what a block in the backfield. Here's a pass downfield incomplete. Mike, there was nobody in the lane. Why didn't the receiver come back? There was nobody there. You know why? Because he stopped running. He stopped running the pattern. He looked back and saw Butcher rolling out and being pressured, and he wasn't created. He didn't come back. He didn't break off the pattern to get open. That's the cardinal rule when your quarterback's probably. That's right. That's a poor offensive uh, pattern run there by the receiver 24 Chris Reamer the, you got to help your quarterback yes he had to come back and he didn't and the ball fell at his feet second and ten now and Mike now you're seeing probably why they're not throwing the ball the Matadors just are doing very well covering the offensive line receivers there here we go second and ten again in the eye formation Carlisle and Penn in the backfield the pitch to Carlisle Carlisle trying to break it to the outside. Carlisle still on his feet. Carlisle with a first down. Carlisle down at the 40-yard line of the Matadors. Mayosi finally making the tackle. Carlisle just ran away from the defense that time. That was a nice execution on the option play. Carlisle takes the pitch, goes wide, breaks it to the outside. He's able to break up the line, up, up to the far sideline. And Mayosi, with his fine speed and his ability to recover, comes in and makes the tackle. First and 10 at the Matador 40 now. Carlisle about 40 yards on those last few carries are though so it seems and it's some big yards again in the backfield Penn and Carlisle in the eye two receivers at the near side one of them's Reamer the give to Carlisle Carlisle trying to bump it out to the outside again he does this time he's brought down gains maybe a yard that'll be a progress mark and Mono Alvarado making the stop there for La Mirada 
the real, the true players on that, the true defensive players that made that play happen were the inside linebackers because they stuffed the initial hole, which which made Carlisle break to the outside, bounce to the outside. You know, Labria and 42 Hira are doing a job of the inside linebackers of stuffing all those gaps, stuffing all those holes, forcing the running backs from Mayfield High School to bounce outside. And of course, there with fine speed and the agility and the athleticism of La Mirada's defensive backfield, they're able to make a lot of these tackles with virtually no gain at all. Four minutes and a second to go here. And I thought Carlisle got at least a yard on that. They're saying nothing, so I guess it's nothing. Let in the backfield now with Penn in the eye. Butcher to throw. Pass is complete to Reamer. Reamer hanging on to it this time. And a four-yard gain. So it'll bring up third down and four, maybe five yards. We'll see what they spot it, Mike. They're gonna spot it. So it's gonna be actually third and six. is gonna have to be a little bit more creative than that, Rich, other than the first, you know, the four or five yard look, hook ins or square outs. They're gonna, you know, that middle's wide open when Butcher goes back. They, he should, they should have a, a back drift through the middle there and go over the middle where those linebackers they fly out of there as soon as Butcher shows Pat. Third and five, we'll call it. Let in the eye with Penn. Fake to let. Little play action. Pass incomplete. And attended, attended for Penn. And it's going to be a fourth and five now for Mayfair. And they almost have to go for it, I would think, Mike. They have to go for it. Three minutes and two seconds left here in the third. Another little five or six yard out pattern. He was covered very well by Halleck, number 25 for Lamrana. And although the pass was a little off, Penn still should have caught it. Butcher's just been that all night. Just a little off or right on. It, a lot of passes that have been dropped. He hasn't got much help from his receivers. He's just not having a, having a very good night tonight. Carlisle enters the ball game now with Penn in the eye. Chris Reamer to the near side. That wide receiver. Butcher taking his time under center. Butcher drops again, plenty of time. Throws and the pass is caught by Reamer, but it's caught out of bounds. Good defense there by number 24, Kenny Harrington for La Mirada. And the Matadors will take over on downs at the 35-yard line on that fourth down play. Actually, Harrington deflected it. And as he deflected it, Reamer was able to make the catch, but he was already out of bounds. A nice defensive play there by Kenny Harrington. Here's a shot of Butchers. Somebody just walks in front of him. But you saw, look at the back, his lower lumbar pad, everything just kind of hanging out there for him. And, He's had a rough night. Of course, Mike, having to play quarterback and long snapper and everything <laughs> takes its toll on you during the course of the evening. Yeah, I would think so. Hugo Corral is the lone back. Damon Cox under center. Rudiger to the near side. Jack Brooks to the near side. The give goes to Corral. Corral gets nailed by number two, Carlisle. Also number 91, B.J. Amuda. And Amuda puts the finish. He touches off Corral. But look at Corral lines up. He finally goes gets at least four on that, although they grabbed him after the two-yard game. You know what's impressive about that run? When Corral's hit, he's not a very big kid. What is he, 150, 155 pounds? Soaking wet. But his initial hit, he didn't go down. He spun, kept his feet churning, was able to pick up another yard or two before he was finished up by Amada. Yeah, he's still got a way to go. He's, you know, come on. He's only, this is only his second actual game that he's played this year. And Mike, as you know, whenever you got an injury, man, you tend to, to be concerned about it for a couple for of weeks. For a small yeah. kid in stature, he's got a lot of power and strength in his small yeah. body. He hasn't really showed you the best of him yet. You saw it last year. Little play action fake to Corral. Cox calmly rolls out, throws, has Rudiger. Uh, check that. It's not Rudiger. That's number 80. Ben Orr. And Orr gets some big yards out of that. Orr good for 25 yards out to the Mayfair 40. Orr with a deep about a 12, 15-yard hook in. You can see Cox fake the play action, roll out to his right, or is wide open over the middle, or missed tackle by Reamer, or is able to gain another six or seven yards before he's necktied by... Yeah, they could have thrown a flag on ben that yeah, tackle. Abraham, yeah. You don't tackle the throat. Or has it, gets the, excuse me, the Matadors down to the 40, and again, it's first and 10. Corrala Nicolini in the backfield. They've pretty much been the tandem all night. The give goes to Corral, a little fake. Toss to Rudiger is incomplete. Defending was Reamer. And he can be passed to bring up second and 10 from the 40. Cox was pressured just as he released the ball there by Frost. Travis Frost, Tony Schnola. Nice pressure by Mayfair defensive front. 
forcing Cox to hurry his pass, bringing it off the mark. Clock is stopped with 133 left here in the third quarter. Well, the injuries, this game is pretty much stretched out itself. We're already approaching 9 o'clock. We still have a fourth quarter to play. Again in the eye, Corral and Nicolini. Cox just throws it up, a timing pattern, incomplete. I believe that was Jack Brooks, the intended receiver. Pass was there. Brooks just couldn't quite hold on to it. That was a nice call. He got the isolation one-on-one -on -one out there in the corner. Actually did beat him on the fade pattern, but couldn't quite bring it into his numbers. Third down and 10 now with 1.30 to go. 21 to nothing. If you're Mike Fitch, the head coach for Mayfair, you've got to be thinking on the sidelines, what can I do offensively to get on track here and get some kind of momentum going? Nah, Fitch has him right where he wants him. 